live. This is one for the record. I'm Diana, and today is June 10th, 2013. And here's a quick news update for you. Let's go to E and &E News, and then after the news, I'm going to run Dr. Deagle's Nutramedical Report Earth Changes. Okay. E, &E News. Fukushima. State of melted fuel at Fukushima plant. Unknown worker. We opened the Pandora's box. Journalists. We're headed towards a real crisis. Okay, let's now check real quick. U.S. Canada. Alright. All I know is that we're going to have severe weather. Everybody check their weather. Okay. June 10th. U U.S. nuclear plant leaks into control room. Bed of sand that tank was supposedly resting on did not exist. Man dies at U.S. nuclear plant during incident with inflatable castle. Weird. That's kind of an inflatable castle. Alright. Let's check real quick the, uh... We'll check the breaking news real quick, and then we're going to put on Dr. Bill Deagle's Nutramedical Report. Earth Changes. From, uh, I believe it's from May 31st. Alright, let's see if there's anything there. Okay, photo of Fauna Cloud near Brooklyn, Maryland. Matthew Lafier via... MD weather. Okay. Heads up. Also, Alabama Gulf Shores and Florida's Panama City beaches closed due to rip currents. Heads up on that. Alrighty then. Bad rip currents. Alright. Alright, so let me get rid of this. Alright. It is one day down, four to go before the weekend. Stay tuned. I'm putting on Dr. Deagle's Nutra Medical Report. Stay safe and always be prepared for any, or anything, please. Land, ...landfills. And uh, one of the worst contaminants is vinyl chloride. Now, you may that may sound familiar to you, vinyl chloride, because you've probably heard of polyvinyl chloride, right. which is a plastic. Well, as it deteriorates, the bonds break, and it becomes vinyl chloride, which is a gas that is highly carcinogenic. So it not only is it highly carcinogenic, but you breathe it in. I mean, it's in the air, and you breathe it in. So if they're, if they're going to flare off, if they're going to go down and try to set the methane on fire, they're also going to release vinyl chloride into the air. Oh, my. Yeah. This is like the uh, this is like the Roundup Ready areas. I was listening to a program the other day. Roundup Ready areas of uh, of South Dakota and elsewhere up there, where there's so much Roundup in the ground because of Roundup Ready crops that you know it's in the drinking water, it's in the air, it's literally everywhere. It's in the bread. I mean, you know. It's well, not only that, world. now they're growing Roundup resistant weeds. <laughs> Those are the well, only the weeds are going to get resistant. The, the weeds are going to get resistant whether we like it or not. I mean. That's yeah. just, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, this thing just keeps getting worse and worse, and some high school student, or maybe it was a college student, did a survey, did a uh, survey of radiation, discovered she did it all on Facebook, and, uh, no, she did a survey of uh, the people that live in the area, and she was documenting the cancers that they had had. Right. And she discovered a cancer cluster. And one thing led to another, and they finally identified it as the landfill. Oh so I, I give her credit for doing that. I thought that was very bold of her. I don't think she knows how blacklisted she'll be. Mm. Oh, no, no. Listen, I, I heard the latest reports that uh, was kind of like a bold statement that, uh, uh, you know, that Obama has a list. This is somebody actually inside uh, the IRS that said, oh, no, Obama's got to listen to everyone that would surprise you. I mean, it could be on your your mother, your sister, yourself. Uh, he has an, a dossier on everybody. He knows all your credit cards, even your receipts from leaving a parkade. Uh, and so when you do something like this that really pisses off the establishment, you're on what's called the red your dead list. Oh, huh. Red your, you know, those color coding things are real. Red your dead, right? Blue, red, you're we're going to put you in dog. We're, yeah, red, you're dead. You're not going to get into the civil detention camp. We have a bullet. It was an engraved name on the side of the bullet for you. 
uh, we have the blue camp where we're going to try to change you because you might be changeable. Our relatives have convinced us, your relatives, that maybe we can do a kind of lobotomy or, you know, psychic mind transfer, like, you know, let a Vulcan mind meld and turn you into something more like a cyborg. Or, And then, of course, there's a green, which just means you're either passive or you don't care or you're just one of the Borg. <laughs> so it's better to be a slacker than to be somebody who's uh, an irritant. Better to die saying? with your boots on. Better to die with your boots on. Uh, but you're old school. Yeah. Old school, bad school. Innovative bad school. How's that? important topics to talk about. The first one is the uh, MERS-CoV-2, which is a Middle Eastern Respiratory uh, Syndrome, Coronavirus Subclass 2. And we now have hot spots in France, Germany, Britain, and now in America. I got a call this morning, early this morning, from Paul Martin in Colorado uh, about an intimate uh, member, a military member, who didn't travel to the Middle East but had friends and colleagues that went there, get violently sick, in three days we had his temperature spike over 104, Basically, he's hanging on to life by his fingernails, which is not doing very good. Uh, this virus, if you look at the case fatality rates in Germany and France and elsewhere, where it's perped up in eastern Saudi Arabia, uh, it makes children very sick, but usually doesn't kill them. But it kills adults, and it tends to be twice as lethal for adult males as females. Case fatality rate is somewhere between 40 and 60 percent. So if you get it, your chances are a flip of a coin whether you're going to live. And that's with ex- ex- advanced medical care respiratory care, intubation, uh, you know, intravenous induced coma, uh, maybe, uh, you know, heart-lung bypass machine. I mean, basically, cytokine storms, lungs dissolving, uh, angels flying around you, uh, time to go and see Jesus kind of time. And people don't realize that I'm, I've been predicting this for some time, and it's not scaremongering. I tell people, if you're ready, it's no big deal. You've got your nutraceuticals, you have your packages of all your nutraceuticals and your things to protect yourself. You can hunker down for a period of weeks until this darn thing passes. But if you have to go and quote the community to travel to work to do anything, you're putting yourself in grave danger. And, you know, that's why you need our NIOSH N95 masks, our defense wipes, our antipathogenics, because there's nothing that the conventional medical system has that will stop this, but we do. We have neutriodine, diatomic iodine, the silver 100 will kill viruses on contact, and we have the new Allison Med, we have Alamax, um, we have immunoglobulins, Immunomax, we have things that turn off the cytokine storm like Power C+, full vitamin K2, neutriodine, and Allergon, which is diamine oxidase. There's no need for you to sweat over this virus, but those who aren't prepared, they're going to get taken down. And the first group of people that are the biggest knuckleheads are healthcare providers. When this first hits, most of the doctors, nurses, EMTs, and primary care contact people are going to get violently ill. And if we lose a large percentage of them, the rest of them will stay home to protect their families. So you're going to see a collapse of the healthcare system almost instantly as soon as the first wave of this hits, and a lot of the healthcare providers die. They'll they'll go home. Yeah, well, I think this is the second um, the second uh, virus manipulation. We had SARS, and that was in uh, two thousand and what five? So that testing, was about eight testing, years one, ago. One, two, three. T- you're testing, testing. Yes, and, oh. and when it comes when it comes by, it recombines maybe a little later this fall or next year, or another one emerges like H seven N nine, and we don't think SARS is going to come back because it has this R naught number, which is point seven three or whatever. And it doesn't look like, even though it's very lethal, it'll spread rapidly. Just a minor recombinant change of one DNA letter may be all you need for this to turn into a, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde monster virus. So, okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. Go ahead, uh, Ann. Yeah, the SARS came out about eight years ago, and, of course, it was highly transmissible, and the incubation period was very short. And uh, so they were able to stamp it out. So it's uh, r naught number, which is the basic rep reproductive number uh, had, uh, was very high. It was above one anyway. And uh, as noted epidemiologist David N. Fisman has uh, 
calculated an R naught number for this MERS, which is, I believe, the second ball out of the chute. And uh, he says that he thinks that the uh, R naught is probably about 0 0.7576. 7, and uh, when the R naught is equal to 1, then one person who has the disease will transmit it to one person who does not have the, the disease. And uh, so you don't really get an epidemic, except that you have a continual, you have a, uh, you have a population that carries this virus forward in time. And an R0 uh, value greater than one becomes an epidemic. And that's generally so, uh, what the, that's one of the, that's one of the factors that's used to determine how big the ap epidemic will be. I now, got a new term instance, where it is called, well, I'll use a new term. If it's going to be like one case makes one case and it just trickles out, well, it's called a trickledemic. In other words, it doesn't <laughs> explode. But if there's a minor recombination, just one DNA letter. And by the way, if the host is exposed to radioisotopes, extreme stress, whatever, it makes the virus mutate and change. Or recombination with another virus would just decide to have, you know, viral sex and swap some DNA. They do that. They do funky things, viruses. And yeah, once and they, that happens... They could, yeah. They, what, would, what, they would do that inside the human body. Right, that's a mixing vessel inside the person. Or a pig, or a factory farm animal, uh, well, or a wild goose, or anything. I mean, any animal where you can get more than one of these viruses together, because the, there's a lot of coronaviruses that are endemic out in the community there, and wild birds, etc. And all you need to do is have a mixing vessel where this version of the virus recombines, and now you've got a super virus that can go to human receptor binding domain, spread quickly between humans, and has a case, high case fatality rate in specific groups like elderly, like, you know, males versus females, adults, not children. And uh, you've got a pandemic. And then if you're over 25 to 5% case fatality rate, you have society that's going to shut down. Means well, they haven't found anything. any reservoir in any animal population, so they're not, or in, in insect population. They think the reservoir. They think that this virus was made for humans. So it, we think it came out yeah. of the laboratory, and we oh, think yeah. we're doing the beta testing on the second version. Now you know, three strikes and you're out. The third. Yeah, but but, the third but version loading the gun, loading the gun, and will take two years. If this is not going to be a pandemic, it means they're loading the gun, so the virus, just like H five N one. Back in 10 years ago, when H5N1 was coming out, you know, 10 years, 2003, mm -hmm. uh, H5N1 was not in every continent. It's now in the bird populations of every continent. So we now have an endemic load of H5N1 to draw from, to recombine with any new versions. So H5N1 now is the chambers are loaded. This novel coronavirus will load the chambers with all kinds of endemic viruses that are similar to novel coronavirus too, all over the world. And so if it doesn't become a pandemic, it'll load the chambers and come back to at us in the next one or two years. Okay, so let's say that R0 is uh, 0.5. That's an easier illustration than 0.75. And uh, that means that if the primary case has to, has to if it's, if it's 0.5, he has to, he will give it to one of two people. In other words, he won't give it to every person he meets. He'll give it to one of two people. And then those people would have to, those people that are infected, that person that is infected would have to give it to four people one of four people, and then that person that's infected would have to give it to one of eight people, and so on and so forth. So um, it, it does transmit, but it transmits until it runs out of steam, and that's what causes a cluster, and that's what we're seeing with the current MERS. Now, I'm not saying that they aren't going to come out with, a, with, a, uh, with another one that will, that will have an R naught greater than one. Uh, I'm saying that they probably will, and that that one will then uh, become epidemic. They don't have any vaccine. They don't have any treatment. If you get it and you end up in the hospital, you have 50% chance of dying. Now, um, what can we do? We can maintain sanitary practices. That is, we want to maintain social distances. That's six feet between you and the person you're talking to. We want to... Uh, Make sure that we wear a medical mask when we're out in a crowd. 